The film opens with the main character, Ben, dancing at a party. He mouths the words to the song that is playing, while his friend Dom records him. Ben tells him he is going to miss this place. He is also going to miss Dom. He thinks Dom would do the same thing if he were in Ben's position. He asks his friend what is one good reason for him to stay there. It's a question Dom cannot answer. He asks Ben how much money he has saved. It does not matter too much, because Ben says an unspecified, they are paying for everything. Dom thinks they are going to want all that money back. He wonders if Ben is going to remember him after becoming famous. But the one leaving doesn't want to hear such absurd words. Dom asks him what it feels like having the indecent job that he has. He doesn't care what others think, replies Ben. Later, the friends leave the party and enter a truck. They arrive at a house where a young lady walks over to them. She tells Dom she is his cousin's friend Alice. She tells him his cousin Dee is asleep. Alice wastes no time presenting herself as a tough person. She tries to stop Dom from seeing Dee, saying his cousin is resting. Regardless of what she says, Dom gets out of the truck to see his cousin intoxicate. It upsets him to see her like this. Alice asks him if he wants his money, and he says he does. Ben is shocked to learn that elite are going to be involved with them. Dom says he wanted to send him to California with some money. Moving along, Alice tells Dom he has to swallow the substances before he makes the trip, but he does not want to do it, adding it wasn't part of the deal. As Alice answers her phone, the friends go back to their truck. It doesn't take long for her to approach them with a gun, telling Dom he is not backing away from this. It is too late for that. Giving Dom the substance container, she says the contents inside need to be kept at the right temperature. If Dom messes it up, he gets nothing from the deal. Now she wants him to swallow them, an action he has a hard time taking part in. However, he does it because of the gun being pointed at him. Alice says when the substances leave his body, he has to be careful. It is important they don't get damaged. Dom keeps swallowing more of them. What stops the guy is seeing his cousin suffering from intoxication. He has to exit the vehicle to tend to her. This leaves Ben alone with the gun wielding Alice, who wants him to swallow the remaining substances. Like his friend, he struggles to do it, but he does not have a choice, so he swallows one. Afterward, Dom returns to swallow the last one. Alice tells them once the packages are delivered, the money will be theirs. She leaves, and Dom tells Ben he is sorry the latter had to partake in this. Ben is curious to know what is inside those things. Dom doesn't know, and he does not even want to. The next scene has the duo arriving at a customs check. The officer asks them where they are going, to which Dom answers they are going home. No problem takes place there. The officer smoothly lets them pass. Elsewhere, Ben asks Dom how his stomach is. A question left hanging. Ben says he could come with him. He thinks Dom could get a job and an apartment. Yet his friend says, this is all about Ben. He's going to have many people dreaming about him. Ben asks if Dom finds him attractive. The reply he gets is that Dom is with him out of his strong love for Ben. He claims to care more about Ben than any of the girls he's been with. Shortly after, Dom starts to feel bad and runs inside the lavatory. While he is there, another truck arrives. A man steps out of it to enter the restroom too. Hearing him walk inside, Dom asks if he's Ben. But the man rudely asks him who he was expecting. Dom apologizes, before saying he thought the stranger was someone else. When Ben enters, he tells his friend the stranger who left was a redneck. We learn the substances Dom consumed did not exit him in the stall. Soon the stranger re-enters the restroom. Seeing Ben beside the stall, he calls both of them an indecent word. Dom tells him to relax, for they are just talking. This prompts the stranger to ask Ben why the latter looks scared if he's not doing anything. As Ben slowly backs away in fear, the man continues being indecent with him. So Dom exits the stall and tells the stranger to leave his friend alone. When he insults the man, he gets forcefully punched by him. The punch may have damaged the substances inside of him. Once the stranger leaves, he slashes their truck's tires. In the meantime, Dom asks Ben what he's going to do when Dom is not there to protect him. Ben replies guys like the redneck don't live in LA, but Dom claims they live everywhere. In a short time, Dom experiences more pain in his stomach. His friend helps him sit on the floor, where the pain continues to intrude. Ben wants to use Dom's phone, which Dom does not allow. He can't have Ben calling the wrong people in their illegal situation. Ben thinks his friend requires medical attention. Then Dom feels the pain to the point where he removes his pants. He sees something slimy moving inside them, making him wonder and fear what it is. Following this chaos, Ben helps him walk back to their vehicle. Inside, Dom says he can't feel his legs. Ben goes back to the lavatory and stares for several seconds at what resides in Dom's pants. It is an odd creature, moving around. 
He quickly collects the pants containing it before returning to the truck. Attempting to drive, he discovers he can't. Thus he steps out of it to see the truck's tires are flat. Now he is at a loss regarding what to do. He gets back in the vehicle, telling Dom he's calling the emergency number. He has no other choice. As he is talking to the operator, Alice appears to take his phone away. Angered, she demands that Ben exit the truck. When he does, she witnesses the unusual sight of Dom sitting without his pants. Ben informs her of their unlucky situation, in addition to the substances having come out of Dom. What's important for her to know is if the bag containing them broke. Ben says it did not. She orders him to put them in the container. Once he does, he asks what those things are, and she replies he will be informed on their way to the hospital. Alone with Ben, Dom tells him he is scared. Ben promises he won't let anything bad happen to him. Dom falls on him due to his intense pain. Alice starts driving them in her jeep. During the ride, Ben asks her if she will tell them what the substances are because he knows they are not what he initially thought. Alice says some people lick jungle toads to get intoxicated. What they're dealing with now is something like that. The substances they swallowed are bugs. Soon they arrive at a place where Alice starts to open a gate. Ben asks her where they are and Alice calls it a pit stop before the emergency room. Arriving elsewhere, she tells him to wait inside the jeep. Ben wonders what gets done to the bugs they swallowed. Alice returns with a wheelbarrow. She helps Ben place Dom into it. She says they need to get all the bugs out of them and they can go home. Thus Ben wheels Dom to a cabin in the woods. Inside Alice says this was Dom's idea. D said he needed the money right away. Furthermore, she dares to say he wasn't forced into doing this. But Ben reminds her, she pointed a gun at them. His response makes the tough lady say, she doesn't have to explain herself to him. She tells him to sit down and continues to be rude. Alice asks Ben, if Dom knows how Ben is in love with him, he doesn't answer her. He asks his friend how he's doing. Dom claims he's been better. After Alice talks on the phone to someone, she says they have to get the bugs out now. Suddenly, it has become urgent for a reason known only to her. Once they get Dom on the floor, Ben says they should give it some more time. However, Alice points her gun at him again, yelling they don't have it. Dom wants Ben to take the bugs out. Alice hurries him to do it, prior to quietly saying he does not want the things hatching inside of Dom. So Ben starts taking part in the messy job of taking the swallowed substances out of his friend. Of course, this gives more pain to Dom. Ben manages to take one of the bugs out and place it into a bowl Alice has prepared. As he continues, someone enters the cabin. It is a middle-aged man named Rich. Dom asks him who he is. Not answering the sufferer, Rich asks Alice if Dom was bitten. She nods her head slightly, causing the man to stress over this news. She assures Rich it was just one, and they can subtract it out of Dom's payment. Hearing this, Dom tells her she won't do it. But Alice asserts that his payment is determined upon successful delivery. She tells her boss that Dom still has three more inside of him, while Ben has one. Rich comes closer to Ben to express his interest in taking the bug out of him. Then he learns Dom is Dee's cousin. He insults Dee, wanting Dom to know how bad she is. The man complains she doesn't show respect. Dom simply wants Rich to give them their money, and they will disappear. Rich agrees with him. He tells Alice to give him his gun. With the gun in his hand, he orders Ben to continue taking out the bugs. He also tells his underling that she can go. He'll take it from there. After Ben takes out another bug, Alice asks Rich about receiving her payment. He says she will get it when he's finished with this. Once she leaves, Rich terrorizes Ben by pointing the gun at him. He takes out another bug, and Rich looks at the bowl in which they all reside. It prompts him to yell profanity for an unknown reason. Subsequently, Dom tells Ben to get out of there, yet his friend is strongly opposed to doing that. Rich transfers the bugs into a container and says in 20 minutes they will be deceased. He wants his companions to know that in 9 years, none of this has ever happened. Ben assures the man, there is only one more for him to get. At this moment, Dom screams in pain. Alice hears it from outside. Dom starts to suffer more. While Rich tries to take the last bug out, Ben thinks they urgently need to get Dom to the hospital. Rich extracts a bag, but there's no bug inside of it. Ben yells, asking what the man has done. Soon Alice returns, seeing what happened. She yells at her boss that he can't let things like this take place. He replies it is on her as much as it is on anyone. She asks Ben if Dom is breathing and Ben says he barely is. While Alice is outside with Rich, Ben tells his friend he is very sorry. After Dom wakes up, he doesn't stay alive for a long time. Ben cannot believe it. He pleads to Dom not to leave him there alone. In a short time, he hears a gunshot outside. When someone enters the cabin, Ben is resting on his friend. It is Rich, saying Alice pulled a knife on him. 
He also tells Ben no one wanted it to happen like this, especially him. His advice is that they should finish this and put it behind them. The man gets emotional, saying he's not a bad person. He needs to hear Ben say it, so the latter does. Rich tries to steer this awful situation into a better area by saying if Ben has a hot bath, he would feel much better. Thus he turns on the water in the bathtub. As it pours, Rich points his gun at Ben from behind, but he does not fire it. Instead, he keeps talking, trying to make both of them lose focus on what's going on. Yet the horrible demise of his best friend is not something Ben can let go of. Rich wants him to know Alice attacked him. Soon Ben turns to face him. He undresses to get into the bathtub and Rich says he will join him. Before he does, Ben enters the bathroom. He searches for something until he finds tweezers. Then he gets into the bathtub with the item. Once Rich comes to him, he says the water should help get the bug out. He proposes to cook spaghetti for Ben or give him alcohol. Ben agrees to have whiskey, therefore Rich brings both of them a glass of it. The man says he would never take advantage of Ben. He adds that he was taken advantage of. After Ben tells him he's moving to LA next week, Rich says the place will love him. He lived in California long ago. He mentions meeting Grace Jones and asks if Ben knows who she is. Since Ben does not answer, Rich concludes he doesn't know. All of this oversharing seems odd considering the situation the two are in. Changing the topic, Ben asks what Rich does with the bugs. A friend of his learned how to milk them, he says. The trick is to do it when they've just hatched. Rich learned how to do something too, which made his business skyrocket by 10,000%. Ben is curious to know what it feels to be bitten, and learns it's a head trip and a full body experience. It will also keep a person excited for 9 hours. One can feel everything but becomes immobile. Finishing his drink, Ben asks for another. As Rich goes to get him one, he exits the bathtub. As he stands by the fire to dry himself, Rich asks what's in LA. Sunshine along with beaches, Ben replies. Rich says if he didn't know better, he would think Ben was flirting with him. Ben tries getting dressed. Yet the man says he will hold onto his clothes for now. Since he has to answer the call of nature, he has to go outside. Out there, he sees a lifeless Alice. He does not seem to find anything as he searches her. Soon Rich comes out to observe if Ben is really relieving himself. He apologizes about Dom and says he doesn't want to run his business this way. He also doesn't know what Ben's deal was with Alice. Regardless, he says he will give everything to Ben, even with the bugs that were destroyed. Ben will receive $15,000. Ben says he wants the money now, which makes Rich ask if he thinks the man carries that much money around. Ben actually thinks he does. Inside, Rich gives a handful of cash to Ben. Seeing the former's jacket, Ben mentions how nice it looks. He wants to try it on, so Rich does not hesitate to put it on him. This is the moment Ben finally uses the tweezers to stab Rich in the neck. He follows this sudden action by running out of the cabin, while Rich fires his gun at the door. Ben runs to one of the vehicles, either Alice's or Rich's. He gets inside, but cannot turn it on. Thus he tries the other vehicle, only to experience the same problem. He resorts to hiding in the woods. As Rich walks nearby, he yells out to Ben that the latter can't go anywhere because Rich has the car keys. He searches for Ben, but can't seem to locate him. He hides somewhere whilst Rich returns to the cabin, stressing out in there. In the meantime, the bug that Ben swallowed wants to come out. Ben removes it seeing the bug move inside its bag. Later, he watches Rich drag Alice into the restroom outhouse and place her corpse in there. Then he tries to search for Ben again for a short time. He calls out to him once, before he returns to the cabin. Inside, we see Ben standing behind him with a fireplace poker in his hand. He slowly walks behind the wicked man to put him in a stranglehold with it. After he pushes Rich to the side, Ben collects his gun. Rich pleads with him that he doesn't have to do this. Having a gun pointed at his head prompts him to say he has money. However, Ben profanely tells him to be silent. He orders Rich to open his eyes and look at him. Ben holds the bug in his hand, which he prompts to bite Rich. We should remember that upon being bitten by one of them, a person loses their ability to move. This allows Ben to use this time to take his deceased friend to a stream. He expresses his last sentiments to him and possibly leaves him there in the most peaceful area of the woods. Following this, he shows the opposite emotions towards Rich. Ben drags him to the restroom outhouse, where Rich says he does not have to do this. Again, he says he has money. Since Ben isn't stopping, Rich says the former will go to hell if he does this to him. Ben shoves him into the toilet, knowing he won't be able to move there for an unknown amount of time, due to being bitten by the intoxicating bug. Then Ben closes the door. If he locked it, his revenge would be even stronger. The final scene has Ben becoming the star Dom believed he would be. 
He is being interviewed while wearing Rich's jacket. At least the vile man brought something good into his life. Ben says he's nervous to be at the awards, but excited too. If people like watching him, that makes him happy. He is grateful to all the people who believed in him and helped him get to where he is today. The interviewer calls him Benji Dom, which is a combination of his and his friend's name. Maybe it's the stage name he decided to have. The film ends on a positive note, with the interviewer telling him he is going places.